Again, welcome to ITCO 211 class. Uh, this is again operating system course. In these lectures, we're going to discuss about the basic concept of operating system, the definitions. Again, this is unit one lectures. So our main objective is to go through what is an operating system, also the basic role of an operating system and the major operating system software subsystems, managers and their functions. Also the difference between badge, interactive, real-time, hybrid, and also embedded operating systems. So first we go through what is an operating system. Here we saw operating system is one of the major software system in our computer. Uh, because again, when we are going to buy a computer, even in a store, it has to come with operating system. So operating system normally manage the hardware and also the application software also. So operating system is the interface between the hardware or the user and also the hardware. So here we send operating system manage computer system hardware and also the software. So this lectures will include what uh, operating system and how they work and what they do and why they do it. So this lecture will describe about uh, how operating system works and the uh, evolution, evolution of operating systems. So first, what is an operating system? And an operating system is a software and we have two types of software. We have the application software and also we have a system software. Operating system is a system software. And a system software is any software that normally interacts with the computer hardware, manages the computer hardware also. And so for example, antivirus software is again a system software because again, it interacts with the computer hardware. So again, operating system is a software, system software. And also we have the hardware will be the physical machine or the electronic components of a computer. So example would be the memory. We have the hard drive, the CPU. These elements are all hardware. So operating system is part of, again, computer system. Also, it manages, as we said earlier, the hardware and the software, all the hardware and the software. So the operating system control every file, device section of a main memory, and also the nanosecond processing time. So again, the operating system manage the CPU, the central processing unit, manage the main memory, also manages the file system. Also, we say the operating system control who can use the system, and also controls how the system is used. So, we have four essential subsystem managers in an operating system. And we have the memory manager, we have also have the processor manager, device manager, the file manager. We also have the network manager, which is the fifth subsystem manager. And the network manager again is the new uh, technology, the operating when we start dealing with the computer network system. So in all modern operating system, we have the network manager. And this assumes the responsibility for networking tasks. For example, make it possible for two computers to share data or even to communicate with each other. Right before the before internet, uh, most operating systems have these four main managers, memory, processor, device, and file managers. But modern computers, at least from after 1995 down, operating system also consists of network manager, uh, which is that's the main function for the network task. We also know operating system have a user command interface. And uh, we have two major types, again, the graphical user interface, which we normally call the GUI. Uh, this is example would be the Windows. 
where we normally interact with the computer using our mouse. Then also we have the command driven interface. An example would be the DOS or UNIS where we interact with the computer again using the command. We have to type in the command using the keyboard. So here we say the user command interface provide the user communication. User issues commands to the operating system. And this is unique to each operating system. And also it may vary between different versions. And again, the two major user command interface again is the graphical user interface and also the command driven interface. So this is an example of an uh, architecture of uh, operating system software. Uh, we have the device manager, process manager, file manager, memory manager, and also the user command interface. So this would be the model of a non-network operating system, which shows all the four major subsystem managers. Again, every operating system will have a device manager to, again, managing the device, devices such as a printer, or even the device in a sub, uh, example will be, uh, let's say, digital camera. Any device that is attached to the computer or it's inside the computer system. Again, the operating system uh, manages. Then we have the file system management and we have the memory. And we have the CPU or the processor manager. Then we have the main user command interface. So again, this is the model for operating system with no network system a model of non-network operating system. So here we say each manager again works closely with other managers. So for example, the device manager most likely will work with the, with the CPU manager but sending tasks from the device to be processed again by the CPU, etc. And also perform a unique role. So each manager perform, for example, file manager perform different role from memory manager. So again, each manager performs its own unique role. So manager tasks include monitor its resources continuously. Also enforce policies that to determine who gets what, when, and how much. This will be again security issues also involved here. Also allocate the resources when appropriate de-allocate the resources when appropriate. And this can be the memory again, manager which again manages the memory resources with the process also managing the CPU time. So the network manager, as we said earlier, the main task is to perform a networking uh, functions such as two computer sharing, data or sharing a software or even communicating with each other. These are again network tasks. So pretty system with a network capability. This will be the fifth essential manager. And this is a convenient way for users to share resources and the network man management system. Also to retain user access control. Most resources we include the hardware resources can be the CPU, the memory, printers, tape drives, modems, and also the disk drives, such as the hardware disk. Then also the software can be any application software, including compilers, uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, uh, any type of again application software, web applications, and also data files. These are all again resources that is managed by the operating system. So this is an operating system with a network system. So this will be our operating system model with network. So a network system have a network manager that assumes responsibility for networking tasks while working harmoniously with other managers in the system. So here, the model consists of five managers. Now we have device manager, file manager, network manager, memory manager, and also the CPU manager. So the CPU again 
manages the allocation and also the processing of the CPU tax. Interruptions may be involved. And the device manager, again, manage all the devices, keyboard, mouse, printer, any device, a modem, monitor, any device that is connected to the computer. Then the memory manager manage, manages the main memory of the computer. Then the network manager manage the network communications, uh, such as protocols, IP addresses, etc. Then the file manager again manage all the file system, data files, compilers, etc. So here we say the main memory in charge of uh, the CPU is in charge of the main memory, such as the random access memory, the RAM. We know most of the job when we start our computer, the operating system is low to the main memory, that's the RAM. And any work we do, always we work from the RAM. Now, when we have a data in the RAM that we are working with, if we didn't save the data and the power goes off, the data will be lost. So the RAM, we normally say it's a volatile system. It can only hold data when the power is on, the computer power is on. So its responsibilities include preserving the space in main memory occupied by the operating system. That's the memory manager. Preserving space in the main memory occupied by the operating system. Also, the memory manager check validity and legality of memory space request. Also setting up the memory tracking table. Uh, tracks usage of memory by sections. Again, needed in multi-use environment. Also deallocating memory to reclaim it. Now the processor management, again, manages the CPU. We normally say the central processing unit is the main brain of the computer. And again, the operating system manages it. So example would be, it will track all the process status. Maybe sometimes now we have a multi-taxing system, multi-processing, multi-trading. So we may have a computer that can perform four or five, any amount of work at the same time. I can have a computer and I can open maybe 10 different websites at the same time. And again, the CPU have to be able, every job that the CPU is doing, it will get what we call the process. So if I open five websites, I will have five different process. And sometimes we may go detail talking about threads. Threads will be uh, a process can have two or more threads. And each thread is doing its own tasks. So here we say the two levels of responsibilities. One, handle the jobs as they enter the system. So this is handled by the job scheduler. Then manage each process within those jobs. And this is handled by the process schedule also. This are very important because sometimes we may have two jobs coming simultaneously or synchronize. So the job scheduler or the process scheduler have to make sure is and be able to manage two jobs or more at the same time simultaneously or synchronizing system. We also have the device management. Now the device management is in charge of monitoring all resources, such as the devices, channels, control units. So the responsibilities include choosing most efficient resource allocation method. An example is printers, the ports, disk drives, etc. And these also are based on scheduling policy, allocating the device, starting device operation. And also if the device are not needed, we can also deallocate the device. And the next one is the file management. So again, this is in charge of managing all the files, data files, program files, compilers in the systems. 
So their responsibilities include enforcing a user program resource access restriction. Uh, users predetermine the access policies, also controlling the user program modification restrictions, such as read only, write, read, create, delete, etc. And also allocating resources, open the file, they are allocating the file by closing it. Now we have a cooperation issues. Uh, so here we say essential managers normally perform individual, individual tasks and harmoniously interact with other managers. And this requires again incredible precision. No single manager performs tasks in isolation. Then they have to cooperate. This is a cooperative issues. Two or more devices or even a process may have to work with each other. So here they say we have the network manager will be convenient way to share resources and also controls user access. So operating system software, again, this is our model again, all the four major modeling, memory manager, file manager, device manager, and process manager. Now, each subsystem manager at the base of the pyramid takes responsibility for its own tasks, at the same time working with other managers. So processor manager may take responsibilities by managing all the processing, trading, different tasks, but at the same time it has to work with the memory management so that system, so that again, it can know when to need the data, when to request the data to the processor to be used, when not to have more data. So for example, the CPU have a special element called the control unit. And the control unit normally control the flow of data from the memory to the CPU and from the CPU also to the memory when the work is done. And this coordinator, we will say this is the CPU coordinator. It has to work with the process manager. So this will be the conclusion of our short lectures on introduction to operating system. So in these lectures, we discuss about what is an operating system, the definition, and what operating system consists of, what is their main purpose, Again, the main purpose of operating system is to manage everything in the computer system, both the hardware or the devices, and also the application softwares that interact with the user. Application software is the software that perform a task or perform a specific task, such as Microsoft Word or even a computer game. But we need operating system to manage those soft softwares. Operating system also is a software, it's a system software. A system software is any software that interacts with the computer hardware. Application software is a software that again perform a specific task. So normally we may say a computer have three layers. The lower layer is the hardware, like CPU, memory, all the devices. Then the second layer will be the operating system. Then the third layer will be the application software that normally interact with the user. Now, the operating system is more or less like and it's interact between the hardware and the application. So it perform most of the tasks managing all the hardware resources and allocating them. So again, this will be the conclusion of our first lectures, unit one, and wish everybody the best. Thank you.